Is your debt causing you sleepless nights? Knock your debt out with Debt KO. And your debt won't be the only thing keeping you up at night. Debt KO, free impartial advice on all your debt. This is Kun Cassis for IFL TV in association with MTK Global. We're in the matchroom boxing bubble. Delighted to be joined by Mr. Tony Sims. How are you, mate? Yeah, I'm all right, Coogan, thank you. Very serious today, what's up? I'm always serious. You are and you're not. I think when you're on camera, you're a bit more serious than kind of day-to-day life, surely. Yeah, yeah. no, that's right. <laughs> uh, huge fight for Conor Ben this week against Sebastian Formella. Um, much publicised. Um, his only defeat coming to Sean Porter, former world champion. So what kind of test is this going to be for, for Conor this week? Yeah, it's a massive test. Um, you know, Conor's not fought at this level before, but he's put the work in over the years, the last four or five years. And we as a team believe he's ready for the step up to face someone of uh, Formella's calibre. As you say, Formella's only lost his last fight out of 23 against uh, Sean Poulter on points. And, and he had a good go with Poulter as well in the States. Uh, the fight before that, he won the IBO World Worldweight title. So, you know, he's boxed a good pedigree of fighters in his career. And um, it's going to be an hard night for Conor Ben, but we're taking the gamble now, and if Conor Ben comes through this fight, you know he puts himself on a world scene. From what Eddie Hearn was telling me, from the kind of the list of opponents, there was I don't know how many that was, but um, that were kind of put to yourself and Conor uh, Formella was the, the toughest of the lot, and that's the one that he wanted, which was important. Well, there was a couple of other tough fighters that was being put forward that we agreed to, but. Um, uh, Eddie put Granadas to us and uh, Sammy Vargas but they weren't ready in time to do this fight and um, you know he put Formella to, to us and uh, you know he's ranked in the top 20 on box rec in the world and uh, we looked at his record and looked at him and uh, it's a good fight for Conor Ben at this stage Would Conor Ben be going out to make a statement this weekend as he always does want to make a statement in his fights by either knocking or, or, or stopping Formella this week. Yeah, I mean, the main thing is to get the win at the end of the day, but, you know, it, like you say there, if, it, if he did catch him and take him out, and then it would obviously it'd make a statement in the world, it is something that Sean Porter never done last time, but the main thing is to box composed, as I know what he can do, and, you know, be smart in there and get the win at the end of the day. Obviously, during the whole lockdown period, uh, he was being linked with a lot of names, Connor. Obviously, the, the, the Chris Jenkins fight didn't happen. Was that a disappointment? It was a little bit of a disappointment in that he wanted a fight for the British and Commonwealth titles. Like every fighter wants them for titles first when they're ready for him. You know, he was mandatory. And um, I believe Eddie Earn tried to make the fight. I think he offered uh, Chris Jenkins quite a big purse to fight Conor Ben on one of the fight camp shows. But obviously it never um, it never materialised. So what we had to do is move on from there. And I think it jump up even further in class than Chris Jenkins and fight Sebastian Formella, who's obviously a bigger opponent, better name, higher ranked. Another opponent, obviously, that's been much talked about is this whole Florian Marco situation. You as a trainer, what, what do you think about that fight with him and Conor? What does that fight do for Conor's career? Because talking to Conor, he doesn't seem to think that it's kind of a step forward in his career. He thinks it's a, he's kind of going back by fighting Florian Marco. Oh, I'd never even heard of this Florian Marco until a couple of months ago, but I don't really know what he's done to, to, to ask for a fight with Conor Ben. I think he's only had five or six fights, hasn't he? So other than just calling him out on Instagram, you know, you know, you need to put yourself in a position to fight Conor Ben. Like he's not the only one. Like I think every welterweight in the country calls Conor Ben out on a weekly basis. So Conor's used to used to that. Obviously, he's the big name in the division in Britain. 
Um, you know, he's carrying his dad's name, Nigel Ben, and um, everyone wants to fight him because he's the money fight. You know, and um, you know that ain't just Marco; it's everybody calling him out. You know, so um, he, he just have to get in line in the queue with everybody else. But what he would need to do is build his record up and win some sort of titles to get in line. But he like, like he's he's probably at the back of the queue. But I mean, it's not a bad thing these fighters calling Connor out, as you say, because that means that Connor's doing something right. He has something that they obviously want, whether it's his name or whatever it is. He's got something that that they want. Yeah, sure. And you know, like, like you say, it means that he's out there and people want to fight him. I suppose Josh Kelly's in the same situation. Everyone wants to fight Josh Kelly because he's a big name, but obviously. You know, I, I think Conor Ben and Josh Kelly are on a collision course. Um, like if Conor Ben comes through Saturday night against Formella and Josh Kelly comes through against Avison, then that's obviously a massive, massive British fight, you know. And, uh, you know, I hope Josh Kelly does come through. And, um, and, that, and that's what everyone will be talking about, I think, next year. Um, I want to switch attention, obviously, to John Ryder. Um, obviously, the news came out last night that um, Callum Smith will, will take on Canelo on December the 19th. So, yeah, what's the situation regarding uh, John Ryder at the moment, Tony? Yeah, um, John's going to be out in December. Um, Eddie's mentioned to me it could be on the undercard of uh, Smith Canelo. So, that'll get John back in the ring in a 10 rounder. And then we'll go from there once he's had the 10 rounder. Obviously, I'm pleased for. Um, Callum Smith getting a fight with Canelo, you know, and as a, as a Brit, I hope he goes and you know goes and beats him. And um, if he does, then I'd like to think that John will be back in line for a return fight with Callum. But you know, first things first, uh, John's got to get back in there and get a win under his belt again and put yourself back in the position. Yeah, obviously, it's still a fight that people still talk about the. A rematch possibility between Callum and, and John. So ideal situation for you that Callum obviously goes uh, to America and, and beats Canelo, and then uh, a, poss a possibility for 2021. Sure, you know we all know that's a big ass beating Canelo. He's like to me, he's the, he, he's the pound for pound today. You know the greatest fighter out there, pound for pound at the moment. But you know, like I say, I I, I would like like to see him do it, like we all would in Britain, like to see Callum go and do that. But, you know, uh, whoever wins out of that, I'd like to think that John can put himself back into a position to fight the winner. And obviously he needs a, he needs a fight under his belt. And I think it'd be a good profile for John to go on the undercard of that fight. Because obviously a lot of, you know, it's going to attract a lot of viewers all over the world. So. You know, if Eddie does manage to get John on that bill, then that'd be a good profile for him. What was the situation then with David Lemieux? Because he was being linked with a fight with John uh, only just recently. Yeah, um, Eddie tried, been, has been trying to do the David Lemieux fight uh, in a final eliminate for, for the WBA on the, uh, I think he was trying to do it on the Joshua undercard December the 12th, but uh, David Lemieux said he wasn't going to be ready in time. So, um, that's it really, we've just been waiting around and then Eddie just told me today that he might be trying to get John onto that, um, that US bill, so the Canelo Smith bill, so um, we just have to, like this, next week we'll know what we're doing. You said to me previously about kind of it being a frustrating discussion, especially like with Eddie Hearn, about John Ryder. Do you feel like since then, a couple of months ago, that things may be starting to take shape now? Yeah, obviously John's been frustrated since the Callum Smith fight, you know, and you've only got to look all over the social media to uh, to see what a frustrating time it must have been for John because I would say 95% of people thought John won that fight, you know, so obviously John's been wanting to want to get the return fight. Obviously, we've had COVID, you know, you know, I put John up for the Billy Joe Saunders fight, you know, and uh, so them fights ain't materialised for John, so obviously it's frustrating for him because he believes he's the best fighter out there at super middleweight in Britain now. And, um, you know, it's just about biding your time and getting yourself back into position. And, um, you know, it's about him getting getting his next fight out of the way, getting a win, and then pushing yourself back into that number one position. So 
that was did you offer John to fight Billy Joe on Billy Joe's fight he's having with Martin Murray on the 4th? Yeah, I offered that fight because I knew that there was a couple of names in the act. There was uh, Martin Murray, I think Rocky Fielding was in the act, and I offered John Ryder as well. So, listen, it never materialised. I believe it probably financially it wasn't a good fight, but I wanted John to get you know, another opportunity, another bite of the cherry. But, listen... You know, Eddie will do, will do what's right by John. And uh, as I say, if he gets a higher profile fight out in the States in his next fight, and then we'll move on from there and try and get into number one position again. Just uh, moving on to Ted Cheeseman. Um, we understand he's in line to for a fight with uh, JJ Metcalf. Yeah, uh, the board have ordered the fight. A vacant British title, obviously, because Scott Fitzgerald's vacated, and the next two in line was JJ Metcalf and uh, Ted Cheeseman. Uh, purse bids for that are uh, December the 9th, so we'll just have to wait and see who wins the purse bid. I think that uh, it's got to happen before April, so you know that's another great fight that Ted will be involved in, and uh, you know JJ Metcalf's a, a very, very good fighter. Like, he's, he's very similar to his dad, Shane Neary, and, um, you know, I've known Shay for many years, and, uh, you know, Ted knows he's got a hard fight on his hands with him, and it's going to be another great fight for TV and for the fans. I believe it'll be a barnstormer, a bit like the Eggett and Cheeseman fight of last uh, last fight camp. And just in regards to the, the other fighters in your stable? Yeah, Felix Cash is mandatory for Denzel Bentley. Um, I spoke to Robert Smith. I think that will go out to purse bids in January. Obviously, Felix has got the Commonwealth and Denzel's got the British now. So that's another good fight that's going to happen. And uh, so, yeah, we'll just wait for that purse bid to come out as well. So it's all go at your gym, basically. Uh, lots of active fighters, a lot of potential fights coming into, into 2021 as well. Yeah, I mean, I spoke to Joe Caldina last night. He's obviously coming off the uh, hand operation. Um, Dr. Mike Hayton um, operated on him in July and he had a hand fusion. So um, he's back punching again. And I expect him to make his return either the end of February, or beginning of March. So we look forward to Joe getting back in the ring. And also um, Eddie's just lining a fight up for Martin J. Ward. He, I think he's been nominated for a final eliminator for the IBF title, so I'm just waiting on really Eddie telling me uh, either when that comes out the purse biz or what, who the opponent is. So um, them two are in line maybe to fight uh, end of February, March. OK, Tony, have you got anything else you'd like to add before uh, we conclude? That's it, Coogan. Um, at least when, we, when I come in this hotel this time, that we never had the aggro that we had last time. We got sent to our rooms, didn't we, both of us? <laughs> yeah, but all was good, and uh, yeah, it all worked out well anyway. That's it, mate, yeah. And uh, yeah, I look forward to Saturday night, you know, and uh, as I said, kind of Ben's in great shape mentally and physically, and uh, it'd be great to see him move himself up onto the world stage. We'll look forward to it. Tony Sims, thank you very much for talking to IFL TV. Best of luck this weekend with Connor, and uh, I'm sure we'll catch up with you again. Thank you very much, Coogan. Is your debt causing you sleepless nights? Knock your debt out with Debt KO. And your debt won't be the only thing keeping you up at night. Debt KO. Free, impartial advice on all your debt.